Okay, so now we are going to start the cells of the bone tissue. Uh, some of the cells that I mentioned earlier, uh, those were cells that were present inside the bone matrix itself. Uh, those were the cells uh, called osteocytes, right? If you can recall, there were cells present inside the bone matrix it itself and not the periosteum, cellular layer. Yeah, inside the bone matrix, there were cells called osteocytes. They had their uh, little canaliculi connecting... Uh, uh, them with other cells and then we also had a cellular layer of periosteum right and inside the periosteum inside the endosteum we had different kinds of cells one of them was the osteoblast we said that osteoblast has a simple cuboidal layer and another cell type that is there is the osteoclast osteoclast is basically a large a gigantic multi-nucleated cell inside the periosteum and endosteum. So if you see a large, a giant cell that has multiple nuclei inside a, a microscopic slide of periosteum or endosteum, then you should automatically assume that it is the osteoclast. What the osteoclast basically does is that it resorbs the bone. So it has these matrix uh, digesting uh, enzymes that are able to break down the matrix and uh, and basically decalcify the bone, break the bone, digest the bone, or, um, absorb the bone, okay? It, it functions for bone resorption. Uh, I will discuss this in just a bit, but the focus of this video is going to be the osteoblast right here. The osteoblast, as I've mentioned, mentioned earlier as well, that these are simple cuboidal uh, cells that are present inside a simple cuboidal layer of the, uh, of the periosteum and the endosteum. Um, so these are derived from osteoprogenitor cells that are uh, derived from mesenchymal stem cells. So for example, um, they could either directly be, uh, be derived from embryonic mesenchyme, so embryo mesenchymal cells or mesenchymal stem cells inside the fibroblast layer that's just uh, outside the periosteum or the other mesenchymal stem cells and what they do is that they give rise to osteo uh, osteoprogenitor cells that are able to form these osteoblasts okay and these osteoblasts are uh, seen right here in this diagram these are these have a simple cuboidal layer now another feature of the osteoblast a uh, histological feature of the osteoblast is that it is very very densely stained it is very basophilic because it is secretory in nature well we're going to study its function just a bit um, so it is very very densely stained because it's very densely um, it's very basophilic very basophilic okay basophilic so it will be very densely stained and basophilic um i think i've taught you this earlier as well as that basophilic substances stain blue b for basophilic b for blue on an asn uh, hne dye as compared to something like uh, eosinophilic substances that stain um, pinkish or reddish okay so basophilic and a simple cuboidal layer of cells present in the periosteum periosteum and and osteum okay both of them have a simple cuboidal layer of densely stained cells very very basophilic cells that are called osteoblast okay so that's cell type number one i'm going to write that down here uh, cell type number one which is the osteoblasts okay osteoblasts are what these are the very densely stained basophilic cells present in a simple cuboidal layer inside the periosteum and the endosteum. And what they're able to do, their function is basically the production of the bone, okay? They're able to produce the bone matrix. And the way they do it is, um, it is summarized in this diagram right here. I have this diagram that I want to show you guys. Okay. Alright, so this diagram shows um, us three osteoblasts right here, if you can see them. One, two, and three. And what these osteoblasts, these are present, remember, in the periosteum and the endosteum, right? Uh, and these are present in what kind of layer? Simple cuboidal layer, right? A simple cuboidal layer of uh, very basophilic, densely stained cells. Um, and these are present in the periosteum and the endosteum. And what they do is that they secrete the components of the matrix, the bone matrix. So initially what they secrete is uh, the matrix proteins that are then calcified to make them hard. So initially they, they secrete some soft secretions 
of the matrix proteins and uh, proteins, uh, fibers, etc., etc., the components of the matrix, and then all those components are, are calcified or ossified and they become hard. So initially, uh, what they secrete are the matrix components. If you can recall what were the matrix components, I mentioned them in, in the beginning of this video. Well, some of the matrix components were a type of collagen, some proteoglycan, some glycoproteins, etc., etc., right? Um, if you can remember which collagen type was present inside the, inside the matrix, bone matrix, which collagen is present? Collagen type 1. Excellent, okay? Um, some other things like proteoglycans, okay, um, glycoproteins, like for example, there's a glycoprotein called osteonectin, etc., etc. Okay, these are the nectin. Uh, these are the initial components um, of the bone matrix that are secreted to form a soft bone before it has been before it has been calcified before it, it becomes ossified. There, there's a soft bone that forms right here. Okay, and afterwards it is calcified. This soft bone is also called also called woven bone. You must always remember this uh, term, woven bone, as the soft bone initially produced before it is ossified. They use this term a lot in the USMLEs, USMLEs uh, question. So woven bone is first formed and then woven bone is then ossified. This woven bone is formed by, by the release of uh, all of these materials. By the, by the osteoblast. So osteoblasts release all these materials, they form a soft um, uh, tissue that is then ossified. Okay, so this layer, this woven bone layer is also referred to as osteoid layer. Okay, osteoid layer. Uh, we will look at uh, some of the histology slides of this osteoid layer and the mineralized bone and how they differ with each other. Okay, so after the woven bone is formed, after the osteoid layer is formed, after all of these things um, have been secreted, the woven bone is formed, the osteoid layer is formed, then what happens is that these osteoblasts start releasing ossification factors. Okay, they, they want to mineralize the, uh, the woven bone, so they start secreting ossification factors. Now, some of them include matrix vesicles containing phosphate ions, so we have PO4 ions. Uh, similarly, we also have that uh, glycoprotein I mentioned earlier, it was called osteo, osteocalcin right osteocalcin which was able to bring in the pull in the calcium right so um, osteocalcin calcium etc etc uh, i want to mention one thing here is that osteocalcin function is dependent on vitamin k okay vitamin k dependent it is vi vitamin k dependent i've uh, also written uh, written this down in the neat notes if you want to review them you can find the neat notes at our at our website okay so osteocalcin pulls in the calcium by uh, a vitamin k dependent manner and uh, the osteoblast secrete matrix uh, vesicles containing phosphate ions now what they're able to do is that calcium and phosphate calcium plus PO4, what they're able to do is they combine together to form hydroxy crystals, so hydrated crystals, okay? Hydrated crystals called hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite. Uh, and that is, ladies and gentlemen, the hard or the ossified or the mineralized part of the bone, the hydroxyapatite crystal. Now, the greater the hydroxyapatite content of a bone is, the greater it is, the tougher, the more stronger the bone, okay? And if you can guess which bone of our body, can you guess, guess this? I don't think you can because I haven't taught you this, but can you guess which bone of our body or which part of a bone of our body has the greatest hydroxyapatite content the greatest it is the hardest part of our body the the most tough bone of our body which is it well it is the the enamel of the tooth okay enamel of the tooth enamel of the tooth it has the greatest hydroxyapatite content uh, of all the bones in our body. The enamel has around 95%, 95% hydroxyapatite and uh, um, 
uh, and this gives it the nature of, uh, of being the the toughest bone of our body. Okay, so this was how the osteoblasts are able to form a mineralized bone. Okay, so initially what they do is they form, they form, what? They form a an osteoid, a woven bone, right? A woven bone, a soft bone, and that soft bone is then converted into a mineralized bone, right? So a woven bone is formed initially and then it is converted into into a mineralized bone okay so let's have a look at some of the microscopic slides and see uh, osteoblasts in action so this was the first diagram that we studied and this is the first histology slide that i have for you guys okay in this histology slide you should be immediately able to to identify the densely stained simple cuboidal layer of cells. Densely stained basophilic simple cuboidal layer of cells. Right here, right? Yeah, and it is uh, basically occupying all of this bone matrix that contains, if you um, can pay attention to it, it contains the osteocytes enclosed in lacunae. Okay, so these are the osteoblasts. And what they're doing is they are secreting, again, their function, they are secreting Firstly, the soft bone, and then that soft bone is forms the osteoid, right? It is uh, lightly stained right here, if you can see this layer. Yeah, it is lightly stained osteoid layer, soft bone layer, woven bone layer. And then it that, that woven bone is ossified, mineralized, calcified by matrix vesicles containing phosphate ions and uh, and calcium calcium that was pulled by osteocalcin in a vitamin K-dependent manner, forming this hard part of the bone, the mineralized bone, um, which contains the hydroxyapatite crystals. All right, let's go ahead and have a look at uh, another layer, uh, another microscopic slide of, uh, of the periosteum that contains the osteoblast. Okay, um, right here, if you can see, um, it is not very high detail, not the greatest resolution, but we have um, the simple cuboidal layer right here of very densely stained cells immediately you should be able to see and then all of this part right here would be the bone right um, and then there's two parts of bone firstly we have a lightly stained part of the bone yeah this would be the osteoid and then we have a densely stained part of the bone right here which is more pink and this is uh, this is the uh, bone matrix so we have the osteoid let me just label them, I guess. Um, so this would be the osteoblast layer, yeah? And this is the osteoid, or the soft bone, the woven bone, woven bone. And uh, this one right here is the bone matrix that contains the osteocytes enclosed in lacunae. Okay, one thing that I forgot to mention here is that these osteoblasts um, are able to disengage from the simple cuboidal layer and they become part of the bone matrix some of them become part of the bone matrix as the bone grows so they they come off from this uh, simple cuboidal layer and they're able to jump into the bone matrix as the bone grows okay so these osteocytes are basically uh, you could say inactive or mature osteoblasts okay and they came here from this they came here from this osteoblast layer okay all right. Um, I like. I really like this diagram. This diagram shows us layers or lamellae of the of the um, mineralized bone. So we have lamellae of the mineralized bone. We have um, a simple cuboidal layer right here, if you can see, and a simple cuboidal layer right here of very densely stained cells, very densely stained cells right here. Now they have mentioned over here or labeled that this is the woven bone. Yeah the woven bone and obviously it is the woven bone because we, we cannot see the lamellae that are present um, in, in this portion. These are not present inside here. So it's, it's a woven bone or we could also call it osteoid that, that is secreted by, by the osteoblasts that are arranged in simple cuboidal layer of densely stained basophilic cells. Okay. Now, after this woven bone uh, basically ossifies or mineralizes 
uh, to form the crystals, those, uh, that, that mineralized matrix is then uh, arranged in layers called lamellae, right? Lamellae. Yeah, and that it forms the lamellar bone. And we studied different kinds of lamellar bones, right, of the compact bone. We studied the uh, external circumferential lamellae. We studied the, uh, the lamellae, the circular lamellae that were present in the Habersian systems, the osteons. And we studied some of the interstitial lamellae. Okay, now uh, I want to repeat this uh, osteocyte. Uh, genesis again here is that the osteocytes come from these uh, this uh, simple uh, cuboidal layer of osteoblasts. So what these osteoblasts, as they form new bone, they disengage from this osteoblast layer and form, become part of the become part of the lamellar bone in the form of osteocytes, the inactive uh, cells. Okay, so here's a little look at the neat notes um, that I have compiled for you. Here we can see that the bone cells, uh, number one, we have the osteoblast, which are derived from mesenchymal stem cells, etc., etc., and they have a simple cuboidal layer uh, of basophilic cytoplasm due to secretory nature. And what they um, secrete is firstly the woven bone, and then they secrete the ossification factors such as the calcium. Uh, basically osteocalcin that brings in the calcium and uh, the phosphate ions and these are able to combine together calcium and phosphate ions combine together to form to form what hydroxy appetite crystals right and these crystals are the mineralized bone the mineralized matrix and these are arranged in lamellae they form the lamellar bone like external circumferential lamellae um, circular lamellae of the osteons or the interstitial lamellae and I also mentioned that the greater the hydroxyapatite uh, content of a bone is, the greater the, the greater the tensile strength of that bone. Okay, that's pretty much it. Let's jump on to the osteocytes.